Hey, what's up everyone? So last time we talked about yin and yang. We talked about what these things mean, um, how they describe balance, how most people's bodies today are too yin, and we need to add more yang energy to our bodies. Now, one of the most important ways that we can add more yang energy to our bodies is through diet. So today, so today I'm going to be talking about macrobiotics. Um, this is a little bit different than most ma macrobiotics that people are used to. Uh, it's been adjusted for nutritional balancing science, but we find that these methods are uh, actually more effective than what most people think of in terms of macrobiotics. So, as you remember, yang means condensed, it means energy moving downward, it's fiery energy. Whereas yin is watery, it's, um, it's energy moving upward and outward, it's, uh, it's associated more with the mind. And so we can also apply these things to diet and we can adjust our diet so that we eat a more yang diet and add more yang energy to balance our bodies with the yin and yang energy. So the most important things to know is that on one side of the spectrum you have sea salt. Okay, now why is sea salt so yang? First of all, it's nutrient dense. Um, sea salt is actually full of minerals. We recommend that everyone uses sea salt. And also, it's if you think about it, you know the yang qualities. It's condensing. It contracts food because it's salt. Okay, it's nutrient dense, making it more yang. And then on the other side, we have the most yin things that you can put in your bodies. Um, toxic metals and radiation are the most yin things because they cause chaos and disorder in the body. Drugs are extremely yin. Uh, alcohol, uh, marijuana, all, all, most all drugs are extremely yin in nature because of the, again, the chaos that they cause in the body. So, followed by drugs, we have sugar. Okay, sugar is one of the most yin things that we consume today. Um, sugar is very yin in macrobiotics. Um, most people consume way too much sugar. You know, sugar's in freaking everything. Uh, you know, they put it in. You know, even eating, you know, people think that you should drink a lot of juice, for example. You know, juice has a ton of sugar in it. Followed by, so next we have fruit. Um, so an important concept also in macrobiotics is that things that grow higher up in the air or tend to be more yin. For example, root vegetables are extremely yang. Uh, more, they're more yang than uh, vegetables that grow, you know, above ground. So fruit tend to be very yin, along with nuts and things like that, because um, because they grow up in the air, they grow high up in the air. Their um, fruits are very watery and sugary, which are both yin attributes. They're also very airy, you know, they're not very dense. You can also describe yin and yang in terms of uh, etheric energy. Okay, these. These things are tend to add more energy to the body, you know. Not only yang energy, but um, you know, etheric energy. If you think of uh, like animals, for example, are going to be higher in um, higher in energy, and you're actually absorbing some of that energy into your body. And it's important that it's important today that we're because we're so toxic and depleted that we eat these foods to get more energy into our bodies. Okay. So an important distinction is that in most macrobiotics and that what people think of in, ma in terms of macrobiotics is um, that they actually suggest eating mostly cooked grains. Now cooked grains aren't necessarily that bad of a food, but the problem today is that people have bad digestion, they have um, fungus overgrowth, yeast overgrowth in their bodies, and a lot of people don't, very, don't do very good off cooked grains, you know, because mostly because they don't have good enough digestion. So in nutritional balancing science, we actually recommend a diet about 60% 60, 60 by volume of cooked vegetables. Okay, so cooking things actually makes it more young. That's a important concept to realize is that cooking things makes it more young. Okay, the more raw something is, except for in the cases of fats, which should be eaten in a raw state, cooking things makes it more young. For example, vegetables are a little more on the yin side, but once you cook them, they become more young. So vegetables, as you can see, are right here, kind of neutral. But when we cook them, you see that? It makes them more yang, okay? So the same thing goes for, um, the same thing goes for everything. Cooking food actually puts energy into it that you're then absorbing in your body. It also makes it easier to digest. You get more minerals in it. Um, it's easy, it's uh, um, all, all around it's better, okay? Um, 
So remember that processing food also makes things more yin. So for example, sea salt, we see that sea salt is very young, okay? However, most people eat processed salt, which is table salt, okay? Table salt is just sea salt that they've extracted from seabeds and then they've processed it and taken all the minerals out and they sell the minerals separately, okay? Now remember, now processing that makes more and less nutrient dense, okay? So we're taking sea salt, we process it, it makes it more yin, okay? Processing any any food tends to make it more yin because you're taking minerals out, you're making it less nutrient dense. Okay, you're taking more, you're taking energy out of it. So, second most young thing you can eat besides sea salt, eggs actually. Okay, so you think of eggs. Why are eggs so young? Well, they're extremely nutrient dense. Okay, eggs have a ton of nutrients in them. Um, it has even a little bit of vitamin C, it has things that are good for your eyes, um, it has good forms of, it's a good quality fat. That's important to eat high quality egg, high quality organic eggs, okay, because it's going to have more of the things we need. But eggs are very young. If you think about eggs, they give life, okay. Egg is basically all the nutrients that is needed to give life to the chicken, right, or the egg for whatever other, an for other whatever animal it is, okay. So all these nutrients are needed for the little embryo to grow, okay? So this has to be, by nature, very nutrient dense. And that's why when you eat these food, when you eat eggs, you're going to get a lot of nutrients. Third most young thing you can eat is red meat. Um, best red meats you could probably eat are is like wild game type stuff, like uh, deer is good, bison. We, we actually recommend you only eat grass-fed beef once or twice a week. The reason for this is that Beef can actually be pretty irritating today. Um, it's been very hybridized. So if you think of hybridization, is basically just cows have been bred so that they're not as... Um, cows haven't been bred for centuries to be nutrient dense. Cows have been bred to produce the most amount of meat. So over time, beef has become more and more irritating and less nutrient dense. So we actually only suggest beef... Make sure First of all, make sure it's grass-fed. And then beef only once or twice a week we recommend. Poultry is right after red meat, things like chicken, turkey, geese, you know, things like that. Then we're going to have fish. Dairy is also pretty young. As you'll notice, things that are more young tend to be animal-derived. So you're going to have animal products, and then more yin things are going to be more found in the animal kingdom. So dairy is actually a fairly balanced, little bit young food, okay? But what happens is that dairy becomes more yin, okay? Now why does dairy become more yin? It's because most dairy that people are eating is pasteurized and homogenized. Now remember that we talked about earlier, past, uh, processing food makes it more yin because you're making it less nutrient dense, okay? First of all, pasteurization uh, and homogenization, um, they destroy some of the calcium. People's bodies aren't easily, uh, they aren't able to utilize as much as the calcium. Uh, you run into other problems. Also, the biggest thing is just that pasteurization and homogenization are just uh, ways for big dairy companies to use sick cows, okay? So they just take a bunch of sick cows, they're shooting full of hormones, they're stuffing them full of grains, it's not the best quality milk, but it doesn't matter if the milk is, you know, full of bacteria and stuff, because they can just pasteurize the hell out of it and then sell it to you. So we recommend that you only eat raw dairy, okay? That's going to be more young, it's going to be more nutrient dense, it's going to be better in general because they have to make, they are forced to take better care of the cows. All right, so grains are right in the middle, cooked grains. Um, grains we like are, best grains you can eat are blue corn followed by brown rice. Those are the best grains. Um, probably shouldn't eat wheat. Wheat's very irritating food today. Um, same with spelt. And then, yeah, like I said, most of the diet should be cooked vegetables. Because as you can remember, vegetables are very nutrient-dense, first of all, and also cooking them adds yang energy to the vegetables. And they're easier to digest, okay? If just eating like a salad, for example, your body doesn't absorb many nutrients from a, from a salad. Um, our digestive systems just aren't equipped, and they're not built to digest raw things like that. Now this is not true for fats, like I said, um, dairy you want to eat raw, um, any truth, truth, any fat, you want to cook a fat as least amount as possible because it tends to ruin a fat. Same with eggs actually, with the eggs, 
you actually want to eat the yolk as runny as possible because the yolk is where most of the fat is and you're better off eating the yolk when it's as raw as possible. So like I said, um, this is macrobiotics, this is just an overview. Um, so you want to limit, you don't want to, you want to limit fruit, okay, you want to limit fruit juices which are very sugary and yin. You want to limit, you know, obviously drugs or, you know, you don't need them. Um, and you want to eat more young things, you want to put sea salt on things, you want to eat eggs, you want to eat meat. We recommend you eat animal protein at least twice a day. Most people need that just because their bodies are rebuilding when they're on a program and they need that high quality protein because your body utilizes those animal proteins a lot better. So I ho hope this helps you guys. Um, I'll be talking more about the diet uh, in, a later, in later videos, um, specifically what kind of vegetables you should eat and things. Uh, like I said, uh, certain vegetables are more young than others. Root vegetables are very young. Things like uh, onion and garlic, ginger, uh, rutabagas, parsnips, those are all more young than other vegetables because they grow in the ground. Um, but I'll be talking more about uh, what kind of vegetables specifically we should be eating and stuff like that. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys later.